Hi, welcome to Linden True Wood Carving. I'm Kevin Baxter. I'm working on a little project here. It's just a small letter opener uh, with a uh, sunflower on it. I was poking around today and drew a rough sketch of a, of a sunflower and thought I'd fit it into a board and then I decided to beef it up a little bit and uh, give myself a little more room to carve so I cut something out and thought I'd start carving on it. So why don't you join me and I'll show you how we did this. What I started with was just a piece of one inch basswood. Um, basswood is a, or linden, it's a real common carving wood, fairly pale in color. Um, this is a yellow wood a little bit because of the age you know, or because of being out in the weather, but uh, um, when you sand it, it's almost snow white. And I took that and uh, made my little pattern, laid it out. I figured I could get a two or three out of the length of that. And so uh, as I, uh, I cut around, what I did was I went ahead and cut around the outside of the leaves. We'll set those later so it's less chance of breaking them as we get carving. So once I cut it out, we'll just go ahead and get started. I'll show you how I lay this out. I'm going to make a, just a quick sketch. Um, what I tried to do here was Oh, I, I didn't want the leaves to break off, or these little petals to break off when I'm carving. So I left it pretty pretty plain. And so I'm gonna make a, a quick sketch where this leaf goes, and this one, and this one. I'm kind of bunching them together. It's not exactly the way a, a sunflower is going to look, but we'll get the idea of it. That'll be this big center petal. And then we'll do the little leaves you know, off of that, as we have in the pattern here. But for now, we just want the big shapes. We're gonna start with that. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna start with a stop cut around this. Stop cut's a pretty simple, basic cut. If you've done any beginning carving, You'll know that it's just a it's just a cut that helps you that other cut push up to it and stop it where you want it to to break off. And I'm gonna I'm just doing a simple angle, keeping my hands away from that blade. I want to set a little depth at first. deeper there. I'm doing a lot of this with a knife because so many beginners, especially in America, start by just whittling projects. I do a lot more of my work with wood carving gouges. But you can lay these three leaves in pretty fast. What I'm doing is I want to set this one behind that one, and I want to set this one deeper here. And then all of this is going to go down against that. It's going to go, the flower is going to be hidden behind that. So along this ridge, all this will get cut away. Now this is too thick right now for a paper cutter, or a, a letter opener, I mean. But we'll narrow that down right now. It just gives me a good handle to hold on to while I'm carving. Okay, I'm gonna outline 
And this one, I think I'll use a V tool here. You can do this with a knife like I did these, or you can take a V tool. This V tool is a 90 degree angle. It's about a quarter inch wide on either side. And I like these because you can lay them down and almost, almost go flat with them. But I'm gonna outline this leaf. I'm gonna take a real shallow cut. I'm not standing back here and pushing on this and letting that, that piece get out of control. I've got my hands wrapped around the, behind the board. I'm using my thumb to kind of slow it down. I'm just going real slow and controlling my cut. I would suggest if you haven't done a lot of carving, you don't have a lot of control, that you clamp this piece down to something and use both hands and carve this way. That's really how you should do it. And then I'm gonna carve across the grain. My grain in this piece, and I didn't tell you about that, it's going directly up and down through it. You can kind of see the, the lines in it. So that's the direction I want to go. That's also going to keep the leaves stronger. And my little brakes, my little petals up above stronger. So as I thin this out, I'm just going to take some of the face of this flower off. We're not going real deep. I'm not even going to go halfway. In fact, I'll even show you. So if we did a halfway mark, for instance, we want to keep it fairly thick in here. We'll, we'll bring it down to an edge, but I don't want the leaves to look like real petals. We're, just, we're going to simulate petals, but since it's something that's handled all the time, we don't want to break those off. So we just want to take a little thickness right out of that area right there. And that's going to help set that level and push it back and get it behind the leaves. Must do a little tearing. The grain must be changing a little bit. I'll switch to a shallow gouge. We'll take just a little waste wood out of there. Speed up the process. You can do all this with a knife. Sometimes if you have gouges to use, that's going to be helpful. This particular piece is about a 3 8 inch wide, number 5, and number 5 is the curvature of the gouge. This is a really handy little gouge for a lot of your carving. If you're a beginning student just getting your tools, that's one of the tools I would recommend. You don't need a lot of tools, but it's one that is narrow enough to get into a lot of places. You can move a lot of wood reasonably fast, like I'm doing. I'm going to taper this whole thing along around it just a little bit this way. So I'm just going to take a little wood off the outer edge. because we want our little flowers, or the leaves around the outside of the, the center part of the flower to kind of roll to the back just a little bit. And work my way down about to where that line is. And this is just going to start shaping this up. And I'm going to keep repeating this. I'm just going to take a little more wood out of off the back side, all the way from the corner of this flower around. I want to leave it fairly flat here. I just want to taper it some. From here, all the way around to this point. We can even come down to this petal. And we can come maybe about that corner right off there. So this is all going to be waste here. So as I take that off, just kind of follow my line. A little, little bit of time, you don't take too many big bites. I kind of take big cuts because my hands are stronger and I'm just more used to doing it. But you can do just small cuts, go nice and easy. I'm 
because if this is a letter opener and it's going to fit in your hand, you want it to be comfortable. And that's part of the reason I left that leaf. So you can hang on to something and it doesn't roll or shift. It just gives you, and then when it's standing up in a, in a cup or something on your desk, you know, you're going to see the flower design. We'll do the same thing. And I'm not going to go too far on this yet, but we're going to take these edges down. But I want to find a center here. So I'm kind of eyeballing it, and then I use my finger as a guide, and I'm drawing a line, and I'm trying to draw it black with a marker so you can see it. You could use a pencil. I'm using a, a real tiny Sharpie. And that's where the edge of my blade is going to be, my letter opener. So a lot of this is going to be waste wood. So I want to go to either side of that. So let's, for now, let's cut that in half and this in half. So this will be waste. We're going to cut down to that line. And all that on the face is going to come off, all this. Down to that line. So when I get done, and this is where those beginning tricks when I teach you about the grain, you know, when you're first making those cuts and feeling the direction of the grain, you're going to know where you can go. And I'm doing a taper here first on the corner. I can see where my line is. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. I'm going to taper it this side. Oops, the grain's still there. Sometimes it switches, and it didn't this time. Under that line, and I tapered it like that. So now it's easier to take the center piece out. If you just lay your knife this way, try to take this out, it's too hard. Then we'll go on to the next step. Well, we got the uh, letter opener roughed in a little bit. I went ahead and worked on the back side. So now you can see the width there that I've started to establish. So it's kind of more a little more of a blade. What I'm going to do now is going to mark the centers of these leaves a little bit. I want to I want to give kind of an illusion that they're going back further than they really are. One way to do that is that we'll take this V tool. Now you can use a V tool. I can use a knife. I'll try a knife on one. I'll try a V tool on one. I'll try a gadget on one so you can see all three. So. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll start with the, this one and use a V-tool. And so I'm going to just make a V-cut. And this is where I'm going to take that knife, that tool, and I'm going to lay it down a little bit this way and use this edge. I'm cutting with the point, but I'm using this edge to kind of take some wood out like a gouge on the back side there. Going up to that point, make my stop cut. And we get a little shadow that way. So this side's wider than this side. This side's going away now. I'm going to take a little bit more away. Go around it. And I don't want it too thin. I don't want to create the thinness of an actual leaf. But we want to simulate a leaf. And then with this one, I think we can use the knife. And I'm going to lay my knife down. So if you only have a knife, you can use a knife. If you have the gouge, fine. If you don't have a gouge, or you have a V-tool. I'll just give you a chance to utilize all three and see how they work. Same thing. I'm doing the same basic kind of cut, making that edge go over. And on this one with the gouge, I'm going to, instead of making, using the point, I'm making a sharp cut. I'm going to lay it flat and just scoop out a little bit, like so. I'm using the point of the leaf up here a little higher. I'm going to take a little more down as I go. And then we'll fit that flower in behind it so I can turn it the right direction. That's one thing you'll find too. I know sometimes I'm here, I'm in the way. Are you, are you seeing what I'm doing? But 
You have to be able to turn your carving lots of different directions to fit the grain, to turn it in a way your hands aren't going to be in the way. Um, even though my finger's out here, it's hanging onto that board. I've got it locked in my fingers. It's not going anywhere. A very controlled cut inside this corner. I use my thumb a lot to, to control that knife. I don't want to lose control of the point. I don't want to get cut. I don't want you to get cut. Unfortunately, carving, we always, you know, we all get cut at some time, but I really, I really dislike it when my students get hurt. Sometimes it just takes that practice to learn. There's still quite a bit of bulk in here, and that's something you want to be careful of. You know, so I want to see, I mean, there's still quite a bit of thickness right here, and I want that. I'm just giving the illusion of the depth. Sunflowers, the center, some centers are small, some are large. I'm doing a larger one, and my little leaves will be up in here, but I'm going to set this circle first. We can take a knife, and we can walk around, set it at an angle and walk around, and do it with the knife. I'm just going to round that edge a little bit. That'll be the center of our flower. And I waited on those leaf points because if I would have cut all those out first with the saw, I would snap them off as I'm carving because I'm putting pressure here and rolling my tool and I don't want to break them off, so I'm saving them to last. To do those, we'll draw them back in. I'll take my pattern and we'll just look at them. It doesn't have to be follows exactly, but it'll give me an idea of where these little guys go. I'm just going to draw on a few and kind of show you where I'm going with it. And we can use, again, the knife or the V-tool. I'll make a stock cut. Take some wood out. Make another stop cut. Some wood up that way. And we're setting these leaves behind one another just like we did these, just on a smaller scale. So we'll start setting these in here. And as I finish all the way around these, I'll go back. And then I'll cut away my notches a little bit at a time. And we need to be careful here. And I've left a lot of thickness here. See, I need to leave, we'll taper that down later. I don't want to break these. And this, this would be kind of next to the last thing I would do, cutting these notches. We just keep doing that all the way around and set those, and then we go back and we do a little final cleanup. Well, I keep working away at it a little bit at a time here. It's beginning to look like a flower. Um, the, uh, the details are starting to come out. It just takes a little time. Um, everybody wants to rush through it, and there's no rushing through it. You'd have to just take the steps and keep working at it. We've got uh, what I began to do, what I showed you with the, uh, well, I'll use the point of the knife here. What I showed you with the flower, I divided all those, 
and then I took this, the corner of this one down a little deeper, this one deeper, this one deeper, so it looks like they're setting behind these. Part of that is how you draw these flower leaves. Is, um, I'll do one on the, the bottom here. I'll turn it so you can see. If I have a leaf here, and I have one here, and I put one in behind it, I can just take a little more wood out of this area and make it look like he's tucked in behind there. So that's what we have right in there, right in there. So these two become the dominant leaves and it breaks up the flower a little bit. I've tapered this, but I'm gonna leave some bulk here. I'm not gonna take a whole lot out. If you can go thinner if you want to, I would just suggest you don't go real far. It's pretty strong right here where the grain goes this direction. When the grain comes out here, all these points have a chance of breaking off. So you want to leave as much bulk as you can. So we can go back and clean it up by just tapering a little bit each way. You don't have to carve the back of the flower. If you want to, that's up to you later. And you can even leave this kind of bulk and still carve the back of the flower. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave it plain. A lot of times, in a, especially like in religious carvings that were done in the cathedrals in Europe, when you saw the beautiful statues up in the altars, um, the backs of the figures weren't carved at all. They're standing in niches and only the front of the, of the log is carved because it wasn't gonna be viewed. What I'm gonna do is, as I've thinned this out, I've left a little taper a little bit like a double-edged sword. You can go thinner. I also have gone and made a slight point on there. They don't have to be real pointed. Um, it's just enough to slide into that envelope area. And we need more of an edge. It doesn't have to be two-sided. It can be one-sided. Uh, just to, that's just the design that I went with. I probably wouldn't have point this until I'm all done with this because I don't want to get jabbed on it, but I'm, I'm going to leave it a little bit blunt, but I want to show you as I taper this down. I'm going to reestablish my center line. I want one straight line now. I want to bring this together like a knife edge. So we have a, it's a little crooked. Thankfully, I can carve straighter and I can draw. See, right from here, the grain's going this way and then this way. It switches on me. And that's what you have to be careful for. When you start getting in thin areas, you don't want to break your, break your piece, break your details. Now I left this leaf kind of bulky. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more. And here too, I'm not gonna carve both sides. You can carve the other side just like I'm doing here. Just watch your grain. You'll know, you know, when you're going with the grain like I'm doing, little curls come off. If I get down here, she wants to grab because my board runs out there, so I need to go that direction. I'm going to see most of my line right up until the very end. And you could even leave it if you want to and sand it off. So there's one edge. And the whole thing needs to be a little thinner, but we've got the edge established. Now this leaf here, I'm going to do just a tiny bit of undercutting. Undercutting is where I create a little shelf. My leaf's standing up and I want to undercut around the edge. I don't want very much because I don't want it to break off. I just want to clean up that edge. When I was outlining that leaf, we had some jagged edges and this will give us a little shadow, make that leaf look a little thicker. 
It creates, it creates a little more shadow there. Nice handheld little piece. You got little grippers on there to, to use it. When I get it thinned out enough, I can slip it into an envelope and it should, uh, should do its job. It's just a nice quick little carving project. So, thanks for coming and uh, thanks for joining me on this project. We'll see you next time on One Entry Wood Carving.